learning from someone who's also good at making coffee is an easy way to improve your coffee skill. And the easiest place to meet people like that is at your local cafe. This is my favorite cafe in town. Building is really old, but you can feel a lot of history in it. Cafe is right on the riverbank, and it has a great view of the Sayuslo River. It just offers a very soothing environment where you can enjoy your coffee as well. Over the years, I have met many baristas who share their valuable insights. Either it's regarding a specific technique or what equipment to avoid, and of course, their secret recipes. And this cafe actually roasts its own beans. This is where I get my weekly fresh supplies of coffee beans. In addition, this store also offers really cute seasonal decorations, and of course, live music where you can mingle and meet new people. Don't underestimate how much you can learn from a friend who shares the same passion as you. This is why the Star Wars have the Sith Lord and the Apprentice, the Rule of Two. So find a friend and join the dark side of roast. There are two types of coffee beans: single origin and blends. Single origin often indicates the beans coming from the same farm or the same geological region. It can be very pure and very good quality. It can also be a little bit more expensive because it is seasonal and may require import. Single origin coffee produces unique taste. That's why many people love to enjoy it by drinking it black. Next, we're gonna look at a few examples of single origin coffee. The first one is the Hawaii Kona. Only coffee from the Kona district can be described as Kona. Be really careful when you buy Hawaii Kona. If the package doesn't indicate 100% Kona, that means it's a blended product at 10%. Next one is Blue Mountain. Blue Mountain coffee is from Jamaica. It's very popular in Asia, especially Japan. In fact, over 80% of all Blue Mountain coffee is exported to Japan. Next, we're gonna look at the Sumatra coffee. My personal favorite is the Mandiling coffee. Mandiling has a very bitter taste, and it is very good as a iced coffee. And I also think that it synergizes very well with just milk. Next, we'll be looking at the blends. Just because it's a mixture of different types of beans. Doesn't make it inferior to single origin coffee. In fact, it is an art mixing different kinds of beans and creating a specific flavor that you're looking for. The blends can be cheaper and more affordable, and also they're not limited to the seasons. The taste can be more flavorful as well. You're looking at vanilla flavor. You're looking at chocolate flavor, or even mint or lemon. So there's more variety when it comes to blends. It's more commonly used in espresso because the process of espresso can make single origin coffee have out of balance taste and flavor. So what kind of beans do you like? Let me know. Leave in the comment. If I were to make an analogy, coffee beans to your car's engine, then the coffee grinder. Is to your car's tires, and any racing fan will tell you that choosing the right tire is winning the race. Making coffee is all about exposing and soaking as much water as possible with your coffee grounds, and that's how the flavor is extracted. There are two major types of grinder: the blade type, which is often very affordable but limited in option and consistency, and there is the second type, the burr grinder. Which is often a little bit more expensive, but you also get more freedom to tailor your grounds to your liking. My grinder is called the Barraza Coffee Grinder. I've owned it since 2012. It's about $150, and I'll link it in the description. It's very reliable, and it produces consistent result. At the top of the grinder, we have these numbers, which indicates how fine or coarse your grounds will be. And you set it by rotating the cup. Another advantage of a burr grinder is that it does not produce as much heat as the blade grinder does. 
As a result, your beans don't get toasted in the process of grinding. Also, every grinder has its own setting, so make sure you experiment a little bit when you get your new grinder. Quality of your grounds can affect how quickly water can pass through it, which affects your brew time as well as the extraction efficiency. A coarse setting means water can pass through quickly and usually shorter brew time. And finer setting means the particles are packed together tightly, may take longer and even needs pressure. Next, we're gonna look at what the coffee grounds look like at each setting. This is what it looks like at the coarse setting. On my machine, it's setting number 40. It's very suitable for French press, which uses immersion method. And the next one is the medium setting. On my machine, it's setting around 20. This is useful when your method involves water flow. So it's very suitable for siphon, pour over, and drip. The last one is the finest setting. On my machine, it's number one. Because it's very, very dense, sometimes the water can take a long time to pass through it. And sometimes you need pressure to help push the water through it. And that's essentially how espresso works. Having a water heater is essential. You have instant hot water with a single press of a button. I have a Zojirushi water heater and I will link the item in the description. Pretty much every household in Asia has something like this or similar at their house. The model I have here is a 4 liter model. It can hold up to 4 liters of water. It's really easy to clean, it's really easy to maintain. I love it because it's so simple to use and it's also very reliable. On the interface, you have reboil, which is useful for instant noodle. You also have three different temperature settings. I usually keep mine at 195 because this is the closest to the optimal temperature for coffee. Then there's the safety feature, press unlock and dispense to release the water. So this model actually has two types of flow rate control. This is a regular flow rate, and you can press unlock again to use a slower flow rate. And this is the perfect timing to get into the next tip. Pre-warm your cup. Probably not many people talk about this tip, but remember, the devil is in the detail. It's a common practice in drinking tea, but I think it also applies to coffee. The first obvious reason is to pretty much sterilize the cup. And remember, the cup is usually at room temperature. And this is especially more critical when you are drinking coffee in the winter. If you skip this step, by the time you pour your coffee in and ready to drink, the colder temperature has already diluted the actual temperature of the coffee. So the quality of the flavor and the aroma is always going to be a little bit different. So if you feel something is missing, give this a try. Warm up your cup before you pour your coffee in and then see if you can taste the difference.